well, they got the Summer Olympics, I guess. It's when they do the sports or the activities in the heat. It's, uh, I don't know if it's every three or, or five years or something like that, but uh, essentially they run a lot. Yeah, there's running, there's, uh, I guess, jumping. Someone mentioned they're going to jump on a, like, they got like a trampoline or something. It sounds interesting. I, you know, I might watch it. It sounds like a good time. I mean, I prefer the cold myself. So, you know, I'd rather watch them run or, or jump in the winter. But they have a, it's a separate organization from what I understand. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to take our first sneak peek at the Intune Device Migration V7 solution. And uh, I think, you know, we're going to do a whole bunch of content on it, but I think you're going to be really excited on some of the changes in store. So let's get into it. Yeah, no, I mean, I like to watch it while I'm on the couch with a bag of potato chips. Although one time I was watching the Olympics and uh, I guess I got up too fast or I moved for the remote the wrong way and I, I sprained my wrist pretty bad. Uh, so the Olympic injuries are everywhere. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. I know a lot of folks are familiar with my Intune device migration solution, and I really thank everyone for the support. That's kind of what got this channel going and the Discord, and uh, it's been used a lot. There's been some variations on the tool, so it's really cool. I'm glad I was able to you know, contribute this. Um, and what started out was essentially as a way to do uh, migration from one in a device in one Intune tenant, and we're talking Windows devices, from one Intune tenant to another. And I've been thinking about, uh, you know, V version 6.2 has been the most stable, um, but I've been thinking about how we make it better, and literally it's just a matter of having the time to sit down and do it. Um, so what I want to do, and actually I'm going to put the link to this one here, this this uh, device migration improved user experience. That's the one I think everyone should look at if you're not familiar for the solution. I'll put the link below. Um, and that's definitely gonna give you an idea of how the tool works. Um, so I'll put that below, make sure you check it out. But what I wanna talk about is I made this uh, flow chart a little while ago, back in April uh, for the 6.2 launch. And it's very, very messy. And I kinda just wanna talk you through it. I want to pick it apart a little bit. I'm going to walk you through the solution in its current state, right? So imagine you have two Intune tenants, right? Uh, a source tenant and a destination tenant, and you have a Windows machine enrolled, whether it's autopilot or enter joined, and uh, it's managed by Intune, and we need to move it to another tenant without wiping the device. Now, disclaimer, or if you're from Microsoft, this is not supported, right? If it was supported, I wouldn't have had to build this, but as you can read in the GitHub, and if you watch the earlier videos, um, kind of the catalyst for this was I was working with many large organizations who needed to move devices, whether it was for a merger and acquisition or a divestiture, and they simply didn't have the time to uh, lose productivity by having devices that needed to be wiped, right? So they needed a way to, to migrate them while keeping the users up and running. And that's where this started. This was approximately two years ago and it's evolved ever since and it's about to evolve a whole lot more. But that's uh, that's what's happening here, right? So, you know, obviously if you're in a position where you can uh, wipe a device and reissue it to a user or even better, get them new hardware when moving tenants, I mean, obviously that's the optimal choice. But unfortunately, it's not a reality for many folks. So that's just where we are. So the way it works, and I'll go over at high level, is what we've done is we basically deploy this app via the company portal. And the app is a collection of PowerShell scripts and tasks and all kinds of fun stuff. <coughs> so we're authenticating to the source tenant via the Microsoft Graph with an app registration, um, a client ID and secret. Now, I want to make it very clear because this is in a Win32 app. These uh, values are obfuscated from the end user. Um, we're looking into different ways to handle that, but I mean, as of right now, it still works the best and, you know, it's not going to be exposed. Um, we get information about the device in its current state and the user state and log that to the registry. And then we do some prep. So what happens in prep? Uh, a few things, right? We add a admin user called migration in progress. We set some lock screen policy and the whole idea there is we're going to be manipulating the lock screen back and forth so we can keep users out and uh you know that's how we do it and then we set a bunch of tasks right um so these tasks are uh there's a 
first reboot that we call middle boot. Um, there's a new profile task that runs when someone signs in. And uh, basically we go about in the background deleting these objects, right? We delete the uh, Intune MDM cert. We delete the enrollment keys. If it's domain join, we unjoin it. If it's enter join, we unjoin it from both enter ID and AD domain. And we delete the Intune object. And if it's also registered in autopilot, we delete the autopilot object. We then go ahead and install a provisioning package. A provisioning package is the crux of this solution. It basically is a package that contains a bulk primary refresh token that we can use to send the device to the new tenant. At that point, we reboot the device and the users see this screen. Migration in progress, you'll reboot within 30 seconds. Well, that's great. Um, after it reboots, the user is brought to a stage where they sign in. Uh, once they sign in and the device is joined to the new tenant, see, sign in with your new email and password to start migrating your data. At that point, they've signed in, there's a new profile, uh, we get their new SID, right? Um, and then we prepare for the third reboot. And the third reboot, reboot tells the user, your PC will restart one more time to join the destination.com environment. What we were able to do at this point is do a little SID magic. So we take the original profile, right? And we get this from the registry, because remember, we stored it there. Um, and that has the original SID. The new user profile that gets created, if it's the same SAM name in the beginning, it gets this weird string appended. We take the SID of the new one, delete the new profile, but replace the SID from the old to the new. What that does is it lets us retain the original profile while still logging in as the new user. So all the data is there. We then uh, do a bunch of registered cleanup and reboot again. And the final reboot uh, really just looks normal. There's nothing, there's nothing weird in the final reboot. Uh, and then some post -migration, migration tasks. We can update the device group tag via Entra. We migrate the BitLocker key over. We can set the primary user in Intune. And then we can finally have one more task to register an autopilot. So what are we improving here? So let me give you a little sneak peek. So what we're going to do is we really want to eliminate all these reboots. So what we want to eliminate is the whole, that whole piece, right? Um, we want to eliminate this because we can just do this. Uh, right in here, right? We can just set another register in autopilot. And we want to eliminate all these reboots. We want to eliminate the fourth reboot. We want to eliminate uh, that reboot. Uh, we really just want two reboots, uh, technically one and a half. So what we're going to do is we are still going to go through st stages one and two. Um, only we're only setting two tasks. We are going to set a reboot task and a post migrate task. Okay, so after the first reboot, the user is going to see this migration in progress screen. And what's going to happen during that time is we are going to get the SID ahead of time for the new user. So we don't have to build the profile. There won't be anything to delete. We're just going to swap it on the first one. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have to get the new user SID when we get the current user information. Construct current user class. We're also going to construct a new user class. That'll get us that new SID right in the beginning. So we don't have to waste time having the user sign in just to get the SID only to delete the profile later. All right, so let's go over the sequence in a little bit of a simpler way. Um, I'm gonna have to update that name to v7. So, user downloads, downloads migration app from company portal. Now, one of two things is gonna happen. Either we're gonna find the new username on our own. So did we find target username? Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, if my name is Bob Jones at stevecapacity.com, 
And let's say I've migrated to a new tenant, Rubix Dev. The question is, can I just take the first part of the UPN, authenticate into the new tenant and find a user where the, let's say, get user, uh, and we can say where the user principal name, this is a fake graph call, user principal name starts with Bob Jones. That's kind of the it's kind of the idea of the query we're going to make there. And we're going to see if we can find it that way. So if we find the target username, actually just complete migration. And that'll bring us to our first reboot. But now if we can't find it for some reason, then, if it's a no, we're going to prompt, prompt user to sign in into target tenant. So by doing this, we can just say, hey, sign in with your new credentials, and then we'll get the UPN that way to make sure that they are who they're supposed to be, and we got the new UPN. And at that point, we would complete the migration, the rest of it, and go to our first reboot. And after the first reboot, we run our middle boot scripts, or I'll just say our reboot script. Now, what does that do? That replaces the SID, cleans up registry. And then finally, in the post migrate, Post migrate, we update the primary user, set group tag, migrate BitLocker key, and register an autopilot, and then we clean up. So let's go over our flow there, right? This is pretty much it. The user downloads the app. Can the script find the username? Yes or no. If it's no, there's an extra step that's a prompt. If it's yes, we just kind of, you know, breeze right through. But there's one reboot, well, one and a half reboots. Um, yeah, because actually technically here's our second reboot. Let's do that actually. Uh, second reboot. And then we're, the user's up and running. And that's, that's pretty much it. I'm really excited about the new flow of this, especially to the end user. It's going to be a lot less reboots. It's going to be a little bit more streamlined um, and uh, hopefully just an overall faster experience. So what our plans are going to be is we're going to start tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow depends when this comes out. Our next video is going to start detailing the changes in the script because I know a lot of folks like getting in there and seeing what we did. Um, it's not live on GitHub yet. Once I go through the process and kind of explain it, and then we'll take a look at a final, like a user demonstration, uh, we're going to put it in beta. So what we're going to do is if you want to try it out and provide feedback on it, which I would love, uh, you just let me know in the Discord and we'll uh, we'll light that up for you. So we'll give you beta access. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be really interesting. And we're also going to support two more scenarios. We're going to support um, domain or hybrid join. So leaving that to go to pure cloud native. We're also going to add a component to remove Comag or SCCM management. So this is going to be a great solution if you want to go to a more traditional managed state to cloud native. So hopefully we follow along and you can kind of see what we're doing there. I'm pretty excited about it and uh, we'll be seeing you.